Welcome to Rogue Trader. Please read the disclaimer and remember that prices can go down as well as up. Hello, and here's another analysis of Frontier Developments. Frontier Developments are the UK's largest video game producer and publisher. And they're mainly based around this game, Elite Dangerous. Their CEO, David Brabham, was the guy who, with Ian Bell, created this game back in 1984. And in this game, you go around the universe in spaceships, and it's quite a uh, beautiful game. And they only just recently released a new version, Elite Dangerous Odyssey, which unfortunately was full of bugs and a complete flop. So that's why I'm taking another look at them. They have previously released the Jurassic World Evolution game, and as well as Planet Coaster, which is a theme park simulation game and Planet Zoo, where you manage your own zoo. And this company has been trading at a very high price-to-earnings ratio, and a lot of that's because coming up, they've got a Formula One deal in 2022, and a Warhammer game coming out in full year 2023, which will be absolutely massive. Now, unfortunately, their, their Elite Dangerous Odyssey release was a complete fail. Honestly, I mean, it only got 32% in the re review ratings on Steam. And I just recently did a update video on the back of that. So I sold my shares here, but then actually got a real bad feeling about selling them and bought back again. My trading account was filled with the money from selling those shares. And then I used the same amount to buy back again at a lower price. So I ended up gaining one share. So I made about 24 quid from that trade after all the commission and stuff. But of course, it's real amateur hour to do a video and then in a rush sell my shares and then buy them back. And so the reason why I'm doing this update is to decide, you know, what is my plan now with this stock? So they had a good past history of releasing games, uh, Planet Coaster, Jurassic World Evolution, and then Planet Zoo. And then along with the updates of Elite, they built up quite a lot of revenue generation potential. And the share price has actually gone up loads since around 2017. It's currently at about 2,332, but it was as high as well above 3,000 back in 2021, which was when I actually decided to sell half of them. The thing with Frontier Developments was that we knew they had really we knew they had good revenue streams at full year 2020 but then there was a bit of a quiet period from 2021 and 2022 where we had to ask ourselves were they capable of generating these massive revenues as predicted by the analysts and which were perhaps responsible for their high price to earnings ratio before 2023 financial year when we know they're going to make loads of money because then they're going to have the Warhammer game as well as the Formula One deal. Well, after the space legs fail, they did actually come out with a trading update and that, that and in that they reiterated that, they're, that they were on target to meet their 91 million estimates. But then actually the share price crashed by over 10%, but it's actually been bouncing back up since that, which is only a few days ago. It's interesting that during this panic selling here, FDEV's the largest institutional shareholder, Swedbank, actually bought a load of shares. So they're using this opportunity here to snap up a load and they've increased their holding from 7% to 8% of the total shares. So really, I want to focus myself on how really broken is the Elite Dangerous game. And then are they going to get the revenues they need to meet these analyst targets in the next two years? So if you look on Steam, you see that Elite Dangerous Odyssey is still getting really bad reviews. It's only got 32% positive approval rating. And look at how that compares with the approval ratings of the other games. 86% for Planet Zoo. 73% for the original elites. So despite the updates that they've done, 
it's still getting really bad reviews as you can see here on the latest ones so I've been going on YouTube to get a lot of feedback about what's going on and the main problem is is the game just seems fundamentally bugged and you know just they they rushed it out and so there's all kinds of problems with the gameplay and the dynamics of the game and another thing was how it's all been coded there have been some experts online who have been actually importing the game into specialist software to analyze how the graphics work in the game and what they've identified is there's a serious culling issue where normally in a game all the things behind you are hidden behind walls and stuff these aren't processed by the computer so it makes the so it makes the game run a lot smoother but with the rushed odyssey release there's none of this culling technique taking place so that explains why the game is so slow so slow in terms of its frame rate that it makes it practically unplayable for a lot of people and another thing you've got to realize is that before they did this new release they actually had a beautiful game the previous version of elite which was horizons you couldn't walk about but the actual planets that had been built were really beautiful and you could go around and explore the planets and that made the game really amazing just for that however in order to make it so that you'd be able to do the space legs upgrade they changed a lot of the planet tech and so a lot of people were complaining that whereas the games were amazing looking before they now look really dull and boring and they actually have quite an unrealistic look now you can see here images from the same planets and where they've really screwed up is the 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 procedural generation seems to come up with repeating patterns that make them that make the planets look completely unrealistic now whereas before they had it just amazingly balanced so here's another example where this is the same planet one in horizons which was elite before their new release this year and this is odyssey the new one in the supposedly better upgraded game and as you can see before the detail was amazing on the planets where now it just looks like a generic gloop so it's now been a good few weeks since they did the odyssey release and frontier developments have been releasing some updates but it's quite clear from the community that some of the main fundamental problems have still screwed up this game namely the planet tech and then also this culling issue and another thing was that actually a lot of the people wanted you to be able to walk around the ship and in this interview with the fdev community manager that this ability to walk around your ships was not going to happen and also some other telling revelations i don't know someone's asked a question about ship interiors there are no plans for ship interiors and um, i said this in a like way back when i think uh, uh just after i joined uh, there are no plans uh, for ship interiors as i said before i don't believe in giving no answer it's worse than giving an answer i think you people don't want to hear but there are no plans for ship interiors uh da -da -da. someone's asked is the planet tech works as intended so if you're asking is it working as intended uh, no and there's there's multiple levels for that okay and i don't want to go in and overstep my mark with dev um i think we've cleared this up there there is there is there's some issues around um uh graphical issues that are compounding other issues so it's it's a there's a huge sphere around oh, unintentional puns today zach it's like bingo <laughs> Uh, there's a I lot even of that one. stuff at work here with Planetary Deck. It's not just about a button you press. Um, and also, I want players to understand that um, you're seeing things that we don't that shouldn't be displayed the way they should be displayed. There are clearly graphical errors um, that are being remedied and fixed every single update. So we want to get to update five and see how it works. And then we'll take a look at the bigger picture. Um, I will say this as well, and I'm just talking as a player here, not from FDev or from uh, exec level. This is me as a player. Um, I will stress this. People ask me stuff like, will we ever see Pramesh TC again or planets like it? The answer is they are very well in the game. You just haven't found them. A lot of players at the moment have gone to planets that are existing or seen that they have changed, but they've not broadened their scope and gone further afield. I've seen pictures of players in canyons. I've seen pictures of players with sort of uh, 
uh, speed bowls and dune buggies and stuff like that. Um, they are out there, um, but it's something we're not just going to dismiss out of hand. But be, be under no illusions that, um, you know, if you're asking us to then press a button or you want FDEV, us, to press a button and rebake every single planet, it's a huge undertaking and one we won't take lightly. So we're listening, but we are also watching and seeing what pe people and players are doing. But the, to answer your question, per question pertinently, is it working as intended at the moment? No, because there's a multitude of things you are seeing that are incorrect. So we learned from this that you're not going to be able to walk around the ships like for a long, long time. They're not actually going to rebake the planets. So this issue where the planets just look a lot more crapper than they used to, and they used to look amazing, that's essentially permanently broken, at least for a year or so. And we're left with a situation where we've got to accept that Elite Dangerous really is broken, and we can't really expect any serious revenues from it beyond what we used to get before in the coming months. I'm on the Steam charts here, and you can see how there was a massive jump up when they, in a rush, released Odyssey. But you can see how quickly those numbers are dwindling. And the numbers now, if we zoom out a bit, we see that the numbers now, you know, and it's, this is only really a few weeks after release, the numbers now are practically the same, if not lower, the numbers we had before with how amazing Horizons was already. So in terms of the Elite Dangerous part of Frontier Developments, I think that their sales are going to be much, much less than was expected over the next few years from this game. They've, and what a shame that they've completely screwed up what should have been such an amazing game. The reason why Frontier Developments rushed the game was because they wanted to get the sales in from the Space Legs upgrade right before the end of the financial year 2021. I think that what they should have done is they should have just concentrated on having the ability to walk around your ships and then maybe the space stations as well. And so the Space Legs upgrade should have been limited to just the ships and the space stations and then at a lower scale, they could have introduced all these game concepts and got the and got the game released in time for Christmas, which was the original expectation, and got it released properly. Then I think they would have achieved fantastic sales, and then they would have then been able to have spent the next couple of years working on it for the full expansion where you could walk and fight on planets and stuff as well. But yeah, they completely screwed that up. It's definitely a turd. And so the important thing for me to focus on now is we know that they've got a relatively high share price because their price to earnings ratio is based on anticipated future revenues. So the question for me now is, are they going to be able to achieve these future revenues without any elevation of the Elite Dangerous game? So I've got here the average number of average numbers of players of which I've used Steam to get that. The first thing that's interesting is you always see more people playing the game in the winter than in the summer. And that's an interesting trend. And then when the lockdown happened, most of the games got a big boost from the lockdown. Now, the problem is, is although I've got the number of people playing data, Frontier don't provide any kind of breakdown at all as to in which games their sales and their revenues came from. You just get these occasional statements where they say how many units they've sold for each game, but that's always expressed in the calendar year and never relates to the actual financial year in the annual report you're looking at. And they're, f and they're fairly sparse as to when they mention how, many, how much they've sold in each game. So what I did, because I really want to model how are their sales coming in for each of the games is I took what information there was from these little clues in their annual reports. So here for Elite Dangerous, for example, this is when they revealed how many units they sold. And so from that, I could calculate how much they money, how much money they made and when by splitting that up into the time periods. These are quarterly time periods. 
And you can do that, of course, because you know how much the game sells for. So I did that for all four games. And actually, I came up with a very good correlation. So my interim revenue numbers and four-year revenue numbers, they actually correlate very well with, with the numbers that have been reported. So that actually does show that my technique here of using these rare clues to build up the sales profile of, each of these games is actually fairly effective. And this is how this data I've generated plots out. And actually it looks quite similar to the average numbers of player data. And indeed we are getting residual sales from all of the games that we can expect to continue on based on this back history. So this is 2021 and the annual report isn't out, but they did provide us with a trading update. And based on the numbers of units sold as in quarter three, which, which is the last time they gave us a clue on their number of unit on the number of units they'd sold based on that and extrapolating forward i've estimated that given that they told us that they hit their revenue target of 91 million i've worked out from that that elite dangerous sold about 400,000 units netting them revenues netting them revenues of 13 million in quarter 4 of financial year 2021 so, of course, the million dollar question is how much will they make in full year 2022 and how much will they make in full year 2023? Well, in 2022, they have the release of the Jurassic World Evolution game. By the way, this game hadn't actually been announced. They'd always previously said major global license game. But after their latest trading update, we know that it's actually only just a regurgitation of their Jurassic World Evolution. So when they released this game initially, it was alongside a massive film release. However, this time, it's just JWE2. So you've got to ask the question, will it actually generate as much revenues as the initial game did? And I'm a little dubious as it will. You know, I think it's probably more likely to be raising, you know, a little bit less sales. But what I did is I modelled in the same revenue trajectory as when they initial as when they raised the initial game, and that, along with the fairly reliable other data I have, based on looking at the historical, looking based on looking at the historical record that does play out very nicely, that got me to full year revenues in 2022 of 106 million. And this is well below the analyst's 140 million prediction. And that actually makes sense to me because I think when those numbers were first, when those numbers were first cropped up, it was expected that Elite Dangerous was going to be a massive blockbuster hit with the space legs. However, reality confronts us with the fact that it's a complete flop with only 32% approval ratings. So my gut feeling here is that actually in full year 2022, we're gonna miss, Frontier Developments are going to miss their revenue targets. However, when we come to full year 2023, here we've got the release of the Formula One game. Now I've modeled in that that will make half the money as the Jurassic World Evolution game because it's only the Formula One management game, not the actual proper Formula One game. But then there's this Warhammer game, and I think that that Warhammer game is going to be an absolute blockbuster. So I modelled that as making the same as the Jurassic World Evolution, even though I've got a hunch it will make more. And then this gave me a number of 174 million. So this means, I reckon, that they're going to miss their targets in a big way for year 2022, but then have amazing numbers for year 2023. So looking at their profit and loss and go back to one of my earlier videos on this, where I really go in lots of detail, these next few sections, but just more briefly, the profit and loss. And this company has an amazing track record of increasing incomes and not that badly increasing expenditure with their net income rising 
But of course, I'm a little bit worried about what's going to happen next year. But the but the general past history of this company was really good until they screwed up with the space legs. And you can see that graphically here as well. So with assets and debt, it's notable that their intangibles increase as they achieve, as they get the licenses for all these amazing brand for all these amazing brands like Jurassic World and Warhammer and Formula One. And their Cobra engine, of course, plays into those intangible assets as well, I believe. They've been increasingly saving lots of cash as the years went on, which is why I really like them. And looking at their profile, their market capitalization, it actually, it does look kind of crazy. They've got a price, to, they've got a price to earnings ratio of 59, but it's not really that bad. So around here was when I did my initial video on them. I then sold half of my shares with my total investment having doubled since when I initially bought them. But you can see that how the price has fallen from these highs earlier in the year, that does correspond to a more sensible looking market cap. Now, when you compare them to their contemporaries, Keyword Studios and Team 17, I had a quick look on Reuters and Keyword Studios they have a nice increased history of revenue similar to Frontier Developments and a good net income increase. And the same well for Team 17 Group, nice increasing revenue and nice increasing net income, better than actually than Frontier Developments. So actually, Team 17 look worth investigating. But overall, Frontier Developments are, you know, I mean, you could perhaps say they're not too obscenely priced versus their contemporaries but maybe as they're going for a bit of a wobble you could look at a price to earnings ratio as 40 as a good kind of bearish target and that would actually send the share price 25 percent lower at 18 quid 13p if that happened but the bottom line is they're not really outrageously priced versus their contemporaries but you have to remember that it is based on future revenue expectations. Their statement of cash flows from full year 2020 is a beautiful site. I mean, they br they brought they bring in 33 million from 32 million from normal activities. They only had to spend 0.6 million on capex, 21 million on R and D, plus a bit of rent to pay. They're raking in cash, and they had 10 million excess tech, and they had 10 million excess cash. So this is one of the original reasons why I love this company. Just such a, you know, very healthy specimen based on their consolidated statement of cash flows. I took a look at their shareholders, and David Brabham owns 31%, a huge portion. His wife owns 2%, and she actually sold about a million shares back in 2019. Their main shareholders are the Chinese game company Tencent, also Swedbank, Oppenheimer and Canaccord. These are all institutional investors that have 8%, 8% and 4% in them respectively. We know that Swedbank have just been buying shares. I can't help but wonder if this is some kind of tree shake, but of course I'm not quite experienced enough to know for sure. But seeing that Swedbank did buy a load of shares the last couple of days after the share price dropped, it's definitely encouraging in terms of the shareholder profile. So, yeah, so, so no real trends to say, but nice to note the Swedbank action. And this is good data for me to have to study in the future. As the news flow comes in, it's good to have that extra insight in terms of who's buying and selling shares. So whenever I looked at them before, the question always was, can they achieve these increasing revenues by rushing the Elite Dangerous Odyssey release to meet the full year 2021 targets? They have managed to achieve the expected revenues for 2021, but they've brokered this key game that they have, and it really is broken at the moment. I feel fairly confident based on the work I've done and my kind of gut feeling that they're going to miss their targets for full year 2022. 
But I think that things will be amazing again once we get the money from this Warhammer game kicking in. Now, my personal situation, of course, is that I bought a load of them right down here in April 2020. And I've already sold half. So I've doubled my money as is. But I've decided that what I'll do is I'll sell half again. So this will mean I've retained only 25% of my original investment. That way, if the share price does keep going up, I, you know, I won't buy any more, but I'll just be happy I've got some and seeing me profit even more from it. Um, it's kind of like a psychological strategy. If I sell just half again, it means I can forget about frontier developments for the next year and a half. I've made lots of money from them already and can just let that run. But I do think that I should at least sell half based on my analysis. We've got so much potential bad news stories coming up. In full year 2021, which comes later this year, there's potential for real bad news. They've had to be they've had to rush all these games. And if that then affects their expenditure from having to do more R&D, then they could actually have a net income evaporating to only 10 million or something. This, that would actually be unexpected bad news because the analysts are expecting around 17 million. This is the actual analyst data from HSBC. And yeah, indeed, the analysts are expecting about 18 million operating profit for full year 21. So that is potential really bad news. Then, of course, we'll have interim full year 2022 and full year 2022. So if, like I suspect, they fail, to re they fail to meet this 106 million number because, all the, because the potential upswing in Elite Dangerous is evaporated away because they completely screwed up the game, then I do think there's a lot of potential for bad news flow and the share price really could get battered. And then what I propose to do is I'd have a kill box somewhere around this time period. And my plan would be to then buy back to my initial holdings ahead of the release of the Warhammer game. That's assuming a massive overreaction to the bad news, of course. If the price kind of looks sensible, then, I'll, then I won't do anything. So to, so, so to finalise my update... I have already doubled my money on this stock and then sold half. However, unfortunately, having taken a deeper look, Elite Dangerous does seem to be broken for a number of years. And because of that, I think they're going to make a lot less money from this than they first expected. And I don't expect them to meet the 2022 estimates of 106 million in revenues. However, when it comes then to 2023, I expect the estimates to outperform with games work with the games workshop game being a complete blockbuster. So what I've done is I never like to just sell immediately like I did the other week, like a complete amateur and then buy back again. So what my plan is, is I'm going to set a stop loss of just 10% from the current price. And then if that stop loss is hit, I'll then sell half my shares again. That will be a price of £21 per share. And then I'll wait for the full year 2022 annual report. And then around that time or after that time, I'll have my kill zone where I'll plan to top up if the share price is completely trashed by bad news the previous year. So I do hope you've enjoyed this video. I'll put links to the videos I used to show you this Elite Dangerous footage. It was quite regrettable how a few weeks ago I did a quick video, sold, had second thoughts, bought back again. But I think one thing I've learned is always do a full thorough analysis first before making your move. And, you know, I'm kind of learning as I go along here. Having looked more deeper into them this time, I'm very happy with my position moving forward. And assuming the stop loss gets hit, of course, it would be great to just not care about them for the next year and then come back and maybe make a lot of money from them again. 
such a damn shame that they screwed up Elite Dangerous. 